Well, hello. <laughs> Welcome to week 12.1 of the minors. So do you want to explain that? So 12.1. So we're, we're ending the minors with yeah. Habakkuk, but we're actually doing six weeks on deep dive into the Habakkuk. Book. Well, and, and it's I think it's important to kind of end with this because it relates a lot to our culture and our society today that we look around and we say, God, why do you allow these things to take place? I don't like what's happening. How dare you do this? And enter Habakkuk. And that's kind of what he does. He just honestly cries out to God with all the garbage he sees around him and says, why is this happening? Why don't you do anything about it? And God says, I am going to do something about it. You're just not going to like it. <laughs> so we're going to deep dive into that over the next six weeks. Yes. Today, though, we didn't end up being able to have a guest. So just you and I hanging out for a few minutes. Might be a little shorter than uh, normal episodes. but We're hoping so. That's okay. That'd be great. That'd be great. Uh, to kick off, would you mind giving us a recap of this message? So uh, Habakkuk 12.1, all I'm really doing is giving you the, the overview, the history of where Habakkuk is. And essentially Habakkuk is going to come in after Josiah, who was one of the few godly kings the kingdom of Judah ever had. He goes out into battle and dies after making these reforms in the country. And as soon as he dies, one of his kids takes over who is just as evil as everybody else. And then that one gets taken out. Another one get, gets put in who is even worse. And there's only a few years left until Babylon sweeps through and takes out Judah into captivity into Babylon. And it's right before that happens where Habakkuk shows up and he just starts asking God, why do you let this evil go on? Why don't you do something about it? And that's when God says, I am going to do something about it. It. I'm going to bring the Babylonians in. They're going to take everyone out. And Habakkuk is like, that's a bad plan. Let's do something else. But that's actually next week. Now, this week is just looking at the honesty of Habakkuk and how he sees these things happening and he cries out to God. Because really, uh, in the end of it, what you see is if we are not honest with God, we are not going to be able to properly worship him. And if we're not honest with God, we're not going to be honest with other people and we're not going to have real relationships. And third, if we're not honest with God and other people, we're always going to be trying to cover our own sin and own shame in our lives by making up excuses and trying to do our things ourselves, and we're never going to live in the grace that God provides. You say it relates to it's in our culture. Mm -hmm. Are there things today that we as Christians should be lamenting to God about? And, and <laughs> everything. everything. <laughs> and and do Christians do a good job doing that today? Is it is it a proper way? Uh, do we do we properly go to God? For yeah, those I, I think we all fall into the trap of just wanting to complain and looking at everything around us as being everybody else's fault and not our own. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't vote for that, so I'm not responsible for that. And we kind of pull ourselves out when God is constantly calling us, even if we didn't vote for that and something crazy is happening, that we can still step in and bring the good news of the gospel to those situations. But too often, it's easier to sit with other people who are complaining about everything. And I'm not saying I don't do this. I do this as well. But it's easier to sit back and complain at everything that's going on and just watch everything crumble rather than stepping in and doing something. Like a lot of times, I know people who won't even pray for the things going on around them, and they'll just complain when the first thing we should do is probably pray. Mm -hmm. And really, Habakkuk's complaint looks around at you know, not just all the evil nations around them, but he's looking at his own country and saying, we are messed up too, and shouldn't you be doing something about our very own country? And today, I think that's where a lot of Christians are. God, why don't you do something about where we are in our country? And I think God, like he does through many minor prophets, says, I am doing something. Sit back and be astounded because wait till you see what's happening. So how can, how can we as Christians be more honest, more honest about what we see in culture, but also within the church? So I think there's a difference between uh, honesty and complaint and then pointing things out that we just don't like to other people. And so we say, oh, honesty is me getting in somebody's face. Well, that doesn't have to be honesty. Honesty could simply be, hey, I saw this thing. Why did this take place? Can I help you? Or am I seeing this wrong? And I think honesty is when we are open and vulnerable in front of other people to the place that we trust what God has spoken over us to the place where we're not, like I say at the end, if we're not honest with God and others, we're, we are never going to be the people who can be open and honest about who we are. Hmm. How, what things do you see that you strive against, and then how have you seen Christians react poorly within our culture, or even within the church amongst themselves? So, I mean, th there's a couple things, especially with things like gender today. It's 
in America, it's be whatever you want to be, whatever make, makes you feel good, but yet it's now, it's destroying grammar. Mm -hmm. And so we cannot even properly use words we used to do or that I was taught in school and got bad grades for. <laughs> but we, we can't even use the correct terminology for things anymore because everything is just so out of whack. And yet Christians just get angry about this and rail against it rather than saying, look, there's something deeply flawed and broken mm -hmm. in our society. People are looking for something. Even, even people like Christopher Hitchens before he died, you know, I, I hate God, I want to tear him down in everyone's eyes. He's still looking for something. There is something there in him that shows his brokenness of his humanity. And we are all broken. And so I think we need to begin to see that. We need to be a people who can honestly just speak the truth of what's actually there without running out and trying to be offensive. Honesty doesn't mean we're never offensive. Honesty doesn't mean we're always offensive. Honesty means that we speak the truth that God has given to us in ways that will put forth the gospel first and not our own particular views of what politics are first because people will not be saved by politics or saved by the gospel. Hmm. I'm reading this great book on church history right now called Bullies and Saints. And the guy talks about how even some of the worst bullies in church history, they did a lot of things for reasons that they thought were good for the proclamation of the gospel. He goes, many times it didn't work out that way. And it's a very thin line that we have to walk through some of this, thinking about what is the best culturally appropriate way to be able to speak of the gospel that doesn't diminish the truth of who God is but can still maybe reach people where they are that they would understand that we love them. Mm. If I die or Jesus comes back right now in the midst of this, do I want to go stand before Jesus and my last way that I interacted with humanity was, oh, idiot, or do I want to maybe suck that up a bit and think, okay, if I just prayed for them instead, what if I changed my entire outlook and then when I'm standing before Christ, not that it's my own merit, but if I stood before Jesus in a way that I was proud, in my last moments, mm -hmm. rather than like, oh, I can't believe I was doing that in my last moments. So I think we all better live in that moment with that reality of, yeah. of not even not just standing before before God in that the, that moment, um, but yeah, what does the gospel say about this? The gospel says that it's okay that someone's going ten miles an yeah. hour. Like, yeah. it might not be okay to me, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is that really going to be the thing that makes me lose it before mm -hmm. Jesus? I hope not. I don't want to be that guy. I want to be better. I don't, I don't want to be the guy who every time I watch the news, I just think idiot all the time because that is not restorative of the humanity that God calls us to live in. Well, and that's our prayer is that we, as God's people, try to pray for humanity, try to pray that, that the, the who God created all humans being to be, to be can flourish, it can come out, that we don't just demean humanity uh, in, in generalizations uh, and kind of this wide swath across uh, all news and all America, uh, but that we can step into and help people where they need to grow and they need to, they're, where they're looking for something, we, we have an answer. Um, and it is not what we want in, in earthly terms, but it is the person and work of Jesus Christ. So this week, as you're driving around, as you're you're dealing with the public, watching as the news, you're watching the news or <laughs> avoiding it because you also know what's there. Uh, your favorite podcast. <laughs> uh, be praying that God reveals what He would have you see and would have you hear, uh, and start listening for the the deeper things that that people are saying and, and doing, and what it is they're searching for. And with that, we'll be back for part two of Habakkuk uh, next week with a guest. With a guest, with yes, we'll be back with a guest. We should start with this guy right here. Think he was a redhead? Think he was a ginger? Makes sense. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Habakkuk, he has no soul. <laughs>